Um, okay, so I do want to move on to free will because we had you did present to me an argument that I had heard for the first time, um, and so well actually I'll, I'll let you look, kind of lay that out now briefly if you don't mind because you seem to suggest oh, yeah, that sure. free will in, in, even in principle is impossible. Uh, well, it's impossible for us to conceive or describe up. So I, I wouldn't say it's ontologically impossible. I just say okay. the idea is impossible, like a square circle kind of thing. So my, the, my argument is, is that everything you do, every action you decide to do is either done for reasons, in which case it's determined by those reasons and not free because it's determined, or it's done for no reasons, in which case it's random and not free. So either you have the option determined and not free or random and not free. And there's no way to get to add something to that, as far as I know, that can get you out of that dichotomy from of determined or random and get you an actually free choice. So every action you take is either determined or random. There's no way to get free will. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I don't have like a, I wouldn't certainly wouldn't say like a knockdown argument against that or something. I just I just have some thoughts. So I I wouldn't personally necessarily think I I do have to add something to to the dichotomy. I think I'm okay with the dichotomy. I think I would just perhaps suggest that the reason in some cases would be the free choice. Okay. And let's say, let's say, let's just grant that for a moment. And so is this free choice, is this free choice done for reasons or is it done for no reasons? I would say there's, let's say, I w let's, let's say you pick something, just pick any, any option A or option B, let's say, and you have reasons and you have randomness, but you say, okay, so there's, there's, there's third option free choice and this free choice picks A. All right, how did it pick A? Did it pick A for reasons or did it pick A for no reasons? Pick A? Um, well, most likely reasons, unless someone's told me to randomly do something and I just kind of close my eyes and grab it out of there. Right, so it was it was determined. So how is that free? How is that how did the free choice make that action if it was determined by reasons? So I think this the and I'm trying to avoid certain terminology here, but I might not be able to. So I, I, so I do believe that there is kind of a soul distinct from the body, right? And so now I wouldn't say that soul is, is what would you say, com completely free of the burden from any kind of determining reasons, right? So for example, if someone t gives me a choice of foods to pick from for like my next meal, ass assuming that I want to enjoy the meal, there are certain deterministic reasons that will kind of eliminate certain things as my taste buds just don't like those things or don't favor those things um and i i would agree that there are all these kind of deterministic deterministic factors even kind of when you narrow down and say that okay these last three meals i like there are certain deterministic reasons i wouldn't i wouldn't say though that those deterministic reasons what would you say so overburdened the soul that it couldn't overcome them and and still pick one like even if i was determined to pick chicken I, I don't I don't just agree that that negates the soul's freedom in picking chicken, if that made sense. I think you're confusing determinism with materialistic determinism. So when I say determined by reasons, I mean anything. I don't I'm not just talking about physicalism. I mean, if there is a supernatural soul and it chooses to do things completely apart from the material world entirely, if there's a God and the God chooses to do things. It has two options. Either it's going to choose things for reasons and be determined for those reasons. They could be supernatural reasons. That's totally fine. Or it's going to choose them for no reason. This is going to be random. So let's say God decides to create the universe. There's only two possibilities here. Either he did it because he was determined to by something like his nature, or he had no reasons to do it. And it was just a random decision. There's nothing you can add to that to get free will. It doesn't matter if it's uh, physical, natural, deterministic, supernatural, Unless quantum just... fuzziness. And maybe this is just where I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm missing something. I would, I don't, I don't see why it's just saying the reason was his f free choice. Because that's like saying his reason was his reason. It's just circular. There's nothing sure. there that you've added that gets you out of like determinism. So it's saying the reason I did something was because of my nature or my brain. Like that's, that's still determined. That's not free. So you've just added the term free to a determined reason and call it free. Okay, so so this is, I, I so I definitely get what you're saying, and I agree with a lot of it. And this is kind of taking me past the limits of my ability to think on something as complex as this. Um, 
Well, let me try to explain just one more time. If you yeah. take that term free, you freely choose to do something. How did you do it? Like there, there's, there's only two options. Either you did it because of reasons or you did it for no reasons. So you've called this thing free. We don't know what it is yet. You just like put a label around a box around this action you've done, making a choice and you've called this free. And I want to say, well, what's in this box? How did you make a free decision? So any decision you make, you're either going to have to make it for reasons and it's going to be determined by those reasons, or you have to make it for no reasons and it's going to be random. So just calling it free isn't good enough. You're going to have to go further than that and explain how is it free. Because if it mm. if you did it for reasons, it's determined. And if you did it for no reasons, it's random. So how exactly is that free? Okay, so I don't want dead air here, but I, I do have to think about that for a minute, if it's okay. That's fair. Hmm. Because it, it's it's this is really difficult people because I'm I don't think I'm actually disagreeing with anything you're saying. I'm I think I'm just unable to articulate why I I feel that even though I agree with everything you're saying, I don't think it's incompatible with free will being part of part of that process. So I'm we we might have to put a kind of pin in it. I'll, I'll give it to you for now, like. I'll, I'll give it to you and we might come back. Is that okay if we kind of come back to this in a future program? Or yeah. Something? Yeah. It's actually, it's a really interesting topic. I've been trying to, cause people say that a lot and I'm not sure how to explain it to them clearly enough, but it's, it's practicing trying to explain that is important, but yeah, yeah. so it's, it will get back to that I'm later. I'm not disagreeing. I, I don't think I'm not understanding anything you're saying. Cause I'm, I think I'm understanding it and agreeing with it, but there's part of me <laughs> Because kind of even in our own personal experience, if I could, even if I could tell you all the reasons I did X number of actions yesterday and what order I did them, there's there's still kind of something that intuitively says I, ha well, I, I had the I just, freedom. I just had an idea. Okay. I just had an idea. So so let's say um, we have this this di dichotomy. Either you do things for reasons or you do things for no reasons. And I said there's a way out of it. It's called magic. So is, your actions aren't either determined so or random. Be, I There's this clear, third option. I'm not arguing the magic thing. No, this is me. This yeah, is no, my I know, argument. I know, fair argument. All right, so so there's a third option called magic. And so you come you come at me and say, it's not determined, it's not random, it's magic. I would say, okay, so how did that magic complete the task? How did that magic make a choice without it being determined and without it being random? Well, well it's magic. What, what do you mean it's magic? Like You, you have to explain like, how did it make a decision a choice that wasn't done for reasons or was done for no reasons. Well, you'd say it's magic. Well, that doesn't explain anything. You've just said it's magic. You just labeled this mm -hmm. action with a title, but you haven't explained how it did something that wasn't determined by reasons or done for no reasons. So you'd have to go deeper into that and explain how exactly this choice was made by magic that wasn't determined and wasn't non-determined. The same thing applies to free will. So just calling something free will doesn't get you anywhere. Yeah. You have to explain how the decision was made without reasons or with no reasons. Where, where, how does it do that in the third option? Mm -hmm. Just saying, just labeling it isn't an answer. Right. Yeah, so, and, and so I want to be clear. When I'm, I'm not trying to insert free will as a third alternative. I'm just, I think like, because you could describe different kinds of reasons, different kinds of causes, and I'm kind of suggesting without doing a very good job of giving good grounds for it, that free will is one of those reasons or one of those causes. Uh, how, how is it, if it's determined or random, how is it free? Well, well, so I would, so I wouldn't say, I, so instead of the dichotomy of determined or random, I was kind of thinking of the dichotomy of a reason or non-reason. Well, case. those are the same thing. If it's a reason, it's determined. If it's non-reason, it's random. Oh, so maybe that's where we're disagreeing. So would you, so when you talk about something being determined, does this necessarily have to kind of happen in a, in a linear sequence? Um, not necessarily. I don't know. I haven't really, I mean, because it's just a abstract dichotomy here. So if something is done for reasons, then it's determined by those reasons. Mm -hmm. If something is done for no reasons, then it's by definition random. So if it's done for reasons, it's determined. And if it's done for no reasons, it's random. And I don't see a way out of that. So if you say free will is one of those two, well, neither of those two can be free. By definition, if it's determined by reasons, it's not free. 
And if it's done for no reasons, it's not free. Mm -hmm. I don't see how either of those two could be free. So, and I, again, I'm just spitballing here. I'm like at the limits of my ability to do this now. Um, so, okay, so you can think of determination in kind of the typical way it's discussed as kind of prior determination. So, for example, the way my biology is, where you could say determine certain future decisions I make because it determines the way my brain works. So it determines, you know, certain skills versus other skills versus my taste buds. That's probably a more obvious example to people is it'll determine what foods I like versus foods I don't like. Okay, so you can think of that. But then there might also be, um, what would you say, si si simultaneous determination, right? So something, say a reason for me having to do something didn't necessarily precede this moment, but rather there are a bunch of things that happen this moment, and a lot of them kind of play a deterministic role in, in a sp specific choice I make. Is, is, do I make sense so far? Sure. Okay, and so maybe where I think free will comes in because I, I mean and obviously so this thing like a tree like a tree is determined to grow a certain height there's no free will play in there right because there's not kind of a mind so i'm kind of what would you say suggesting that okay there's 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 a soul right and the soul is bound by a lot of deterministic factors namely the body that it's kind of stuck navigating the world through but the soul is the is the thing that navigates through all those deterministic factors and so the soul can sorry bless you um, will is able to navigate, and so even with this kind of simultaneous causes, or what do you say, simultaneous determination, the soul still has to navigate that stuff, and so it's it's not as like a computer that you could just input on all the information, and it would have to spit out a certain thing. The soul is what's determining what's spit out, and it's it's able to navigate through those things. And as I'm saying it, I'm realizing that the counter argument can just be, well, the soul had a reason for navigating a certain way and right it's an infinite regress so anything you say i can just put okay was that done for a reason or no reason and then if you have any kind of response to that okay was that done for a reason or no reason and you have a response to that just, okay is that done for a reason or no reason there's an infinite regress there that you'd have to find a third option to get out of it because mm -hmm. all of the options no matter how much you add there is always going to fall into that dichotomy because it's a p or not p dichotomy reasons or no reasons mm. okay no, that's good. Okay, so I, wow. Okay, so I definitely, I'm glad we did that because that's given me a lot to think about. And I'll really have to sharpen this, because I'm so, I'm sorry. And this this isn't a good argument, but it, there's just something so intuitively that like intuitively I have free will, and so it's like I feel compelled to defend that in some way. But you're you're you're, you're giving me good arguments to so make that difficult. Um, so. Okay, so we, we did talk about this a little bit last time. So Okay, so we go from there. Okay, so no free will. And we, we kind of touched on, okay, well then how are we justified in anything we believe? Even the belief of whether or not we can make claims about other possible worlds or, you know, the very arguments we're making now or, or if we think that there are good reasons or aren't good reasons to believe that God exists. So how, how can we move past, okay, there's no free will to, but we're justified in this discussion we're having, for example. Well, again, you don't need free will to be justified in anything. It's like if you're determined to believe something, that belief is justified independent of why you believe it. It's like uh, the genetic fallacy, sure. you know, where you get your beliefs doesn't make them false, true right. or false. So, for example, the justification comes from uh, epistemic grounding, which is regardless of why you believe it. So it's like if I came, to, like it's called in philosophy, the position is called fallibilism. If you have some kind of justification and of a belief and it happens to be true, well, then it's a justified true belief. You can call it knowledge, regardless of whether or not you know it with absolute certainty or not. So we can be justified in believing things just like a calculator is justified in believing things. Uh, it does it, even though the calculator is determined, it can still be right. Yeah. So it might be wrong, but it can also be right. So whether or not the calculator is justified or has a justified belief isn't dependent upon whether or not the calculator is determined or free. Sure. It doesn't need to be free to be justified. So it's a separate cat category of questions. Is the belief justified is completely separate from whether or not we have free will. They're not connected. You can have it mm. with or without. Sure. Yeah, so I think my question would be more as how we are justified holding the belief. Not Because I would agree. So, for example, you know, you're, you're determined to believe 
there's a tree in spot X in your backyard, and I'm determined to believe there's not a tree there. Well, there either is a tree there or it isn't a tree there, and it really doesn't, that's not related to our beliefs or how we came to those beliefs. Um, but it potentially calls into question, how am I trying to say this? Because you could, you could say there's, there's a separate thing between the, the objective justification of the actual existence of the tree versus the justification of our beliefs of it. And it seems to me, if we're both determined, we're equally justified in our beliefs, but, but one of us is still wrong. Right. That's where the position of fallibilism, the philosopher's take, comes in, is that you have, you have a belief and you have a justification for that belief. And if it's true, then it's knowledge. So mm. it takes into account that objective truth to say well, whether or not it's uh, justifi justified or not, or whether or not it's an actual knowledge or not. And right. I'm not a big fan of fallibilism because it pretty much just has to assume that things are true. We don't know. The honest answer is, is that we don't have any true justification in that way. We, okay. we don't. Uh, we don't under naturalism and we don't under theism. The, the argument under theism is that uh, we can we – can, believe we have knowledge of reality because God gives us accurate uh, or gives us access to reality or access to true knowledge about reality because of something about his property or something. But that's called the the Cartesian circle. If you use that argument, it's viciously circular in the same way if we just said, well, nature just gives us access to the way reality really is and just tells us it by random or something. So there isn't actually a way to get uh, infallible knowledge or infallible justification okay. in that way. In any worldview, as far sure. as I know. So, so the best we have right now is fallibilism in philosophy, where it's just kind of, we have a justification, we have a belief. If the belief is true, then it counts as knowledge. Yeah. And so, I, and I think you, might, you may have said this already, my initial reaction to that is, well, I don't think we could ever have what, what they would call justified knowledge, because it would seem like it's like, okay, so you and I equally determined about our opposite beliefs about this tree, right? Well, and then a third party comes in and says, okay, but in order for that to, to justify as actual knowledge, not only do you have to have the belief, but it actually has to be the case that the tree is really there. But then their right. belief about whether or not the tree is there as the third party making the determination is also determined. And so to me, that doesn't actually get outside what you and I believe to say, well, one of you is objectively right, objectively wrong, either, even though you were both equally determined in your beliefs. Right, right. We can't determine who's objectively right and who's objectively wrong. We okay. just have to assume that one of them is right, and whichever one is right, mm. that person is justified and has knowledge. We just don't know okay. which one of us has knowledge. Right. Okay. So, okay, so here's a question that kind of just came to me. So what would you say is kind of like, like the purpose and the discussion we're having right now? Right, because like you and I obviously have very different worldviews, um, and you know, I might try to give good arguments for mine, you give good arguments for you or yours, and then we both can kind of change and adjust our beliefs, and we're, we're both trying to work to the truth together, right? Um, but if, like, all of that's completely determined, like, okay, well, here's a hypothetical. Your worldview is the correct one, objectively, or ontologically speaking, and mine is invalid, right? And then so you might say, okay, well, the, pur the purpose of us having this discussion is so that you know, as we work through this, I get closer to your worldview because we, we hope that if your worldview is the objectively true one, that the arguments and the evidence is in favor of that. And so I, I would at least hope that what would happen with me in having a conversation like this is I would start being compelled by those arguments and start moving closer to your worldview. But it seems if everything's determined, it could just so happen to be determined that what happens is you end up being compelled by my, my arguments, even though my worldview is the false one. But, you, but for some reason, you were just determined to find this compelling and move closer to my worldview, even though it was incorrect. So how, how do we get out of that and even say, well, that there's a good reason for having this kind of discussion and trying to move to what we at least think is the truth? Well, we're determined to believe things that are reasonable and rational and logical, as far as we can tell, in the ways that our brain works. And so if someone can present a more reasonable or rational argument, you're determined to believe that more than your position. So, for example, my free will defense, you said it was a good – or my free will argument against free will. You said that was a good argument or something that you really had to think about. You were determined to think about that argument because it's a good argument. And it causes you to shift in some way the way you think about your position. And so if we think about it like uh, 
if we're all like just sheep running in every random direction and there's cliffs on all sides except one and my goal is to give you the rational arguments to cause you to change direction and go into the non k or non cliff direction you're determined by those arguments like it's not the fact that you're determined by those arguments is why the discussion is important is because if i can give you the rational arguments you're determined to change direction if you weren't determined by those reasons there'd be no point in having the discussion because it would just be a random result regardless of what i say mm. so the the fact that it's determined is what makes the conversation worth having because if you're determined by rational logic and reason, then I can change your position. I can cause you to stop going towards the cliff and go towards the correct, what I believe to be the correct direction. So the fact is determined is what makes the conversations worth having because you're determined to change direction under certain circumstances. Mm. So two responses to that. So the first is, I mean, I like to think I'm an open-minded person, right? I like to do the best to be not so bogged down in my worldview that I'm, I'm unable to consider other points and change my mind of things. But, but we certainly know there are people who aren't like that. There are people who get more entrenched in their views. And that's when like scientists talk about confirmation bias and people kind of fill their own Facebook feeds with more and more information that continually confirms their worldview and, and excludes evidence against it. So I, w I would say not always. I, I mean, you could easily be sitting down with, right now with someone other than me who certainly isn't open-minded. And, and the more you argue against free will, the more they're going to get bogged down and say, no, free will has to be exactly what it is and then the second thing is it, it all it sounds like the argument we made was what we both seem to agree couldn't be the case as far as justified knowledge because it seemed like you went outside the determination factor to say okay we're determined to believe what has good reason in reality but that's that kind of you know third party objective justification we see i thought we agreed that what a third party couldn't really know because they were determined also so the first thing is that you're right that there are some people who won't change their minds, but there are some people who will. And the point of having the conversation is to shift the ideas of those who will, even if it doesn't change everybody's sure. mind. It's not whatever. But the second thing is that, again, uh, I would ask, I would encourage you to look up fallibilism in philosophy. Mm -hmm. The goal is to provide the justifications. Now, we're determined by the justifications. Now, whether or not those justifications are true or not, we can't know. But we do know that we are determined to follow the justifications if they've conform to logic in some degree and are compelling. And so the goal is to present those to cause people to change direction. Now, whether or not the direction is true or not is unknown, but we can use the determined factors that cause them to be compelled to change their direction. And that's the goal of the conversation is mm -hmm. to change the direction into what we believe is the right. correct justified position. So, so, and so I don't disagree. I guess what I'm questioning is how, how we get outside to determine, okay, the people who are willing to change their minds in the course of the conversation, which you and I agree is, is a great value. It's one of my highest values. Um, okay, but so that person's kind of determined to be more willing to change their mind. And here this other person is determined to you know, like plant their foots down, say, no, you're, you're not changing my mind. And I'm only going to fill my Facebook feed with information that agrees with my worldview. How, how do we determine which determination is struggling for the right words here? but more in oh, we the don't. than the other one. Okay, okay. Again, so we just, we present the rational arguments to cause them to change direction. Mm -hmm. Some will change direction, some will won't. We don't know what the absolute truth is, but we just do the best sure. we can. That's the, the whole point of fallibilism. It's just, we don't know anything with absolute certainty. We can never have those kinds of absolute grounds of infallible knowledge, regardless of our worldview, even if there's a God that still doesn't help us. The only things we can do, the best justification for knowledge we have is fallibilism, which is just, uh, we have a justification for our belief, and if the belief is true, then it's knowledge, and if it's not, it's not knowledge. But we're going to do the best we can to try and articulate that with logic to cause people to go with the best logically justified position we have, regardless of whether or not we can prove it's true. If we, we don't have an infallible knowledge of it, it doesn't make a difference. This is the best we have. Mm. Okay. No, no, fair enough.